in this video I will introduce a logic model which is used for analyze binary variable. The variable I will be using in this video responds if he or she ever drinks alcoholic beverages. Notice that although it takes two values, as it stands it is not suitable for logic analysis because logic only reads variable that takes value 1 and 0. So if you try logit drink age now, uh, state that will tell you that there's uh, outcome does not vary because there's no 0. Okay, so we need to recode the drink first, then we run our logit model. This video is not intended to be teaching about regression, so I won't talk too much about the specific equation issue about the logic model, nor will I talk about the, co the relationship between the linear model and the general specific specification. It is sufficient to say that we can transform the linear model to the odds ratio by using the option OR and or alternatively we can just run a command line called logistic which would directly give us the odds ratio. Throughout the video I will be using logistic regression whenever necessary. Now we have so in this univariate analysis we show that age has uh, a negative e impact on your pro propensity to drink. Now let me add another variable. It is called sex. Sex takes two values. That means we need to make it transform it into indicator variables. Luckily, Stata has an option called XI, which is the interaction expansion that will automatically do the trick. So it will generate, uh, automatically generate a new variable that is called i6 slash 2. Uh, and uh, it will tell you at the top which one is omitted as a reference group. This is a very useful uh, command that comes very handy when you have a lot of indicator variable. It's, or you want to put a full set of dummy of, let's say, fixed effect. The only problem though is that it generates a variable name that is not so readable. And the table isn't so readable either. So alternatively, you can just run the regression by dot sex, but not uh, using the xi column prefix. It will give you the same thing. So note that here two dot sex means one dot sex that is male has been uh, omitted from no omitted from the regression analysis as a reference group. So here let me clarify on the terminology that I'm using here. Omitted does not mean that those observations that takes value 1 is kicked out of the regression. For the technical reason, to be specific about collinearity, when you have constant, you can't have a full set of dummy which in this case means both sex 1 and sex 2 into regression. You therefore you need to make one make one at least one of those two the latent uh, va latent value that serves as a reference group. Okay, so but so uh, so much for the uh, in, uh dummy specification issue. Now, the reason I don't quite like the way this uh, regression writes is that it is not compatible with another very important state command, stab. You cannot uh, call that function in the stab, especially with the, with the interaction between two dummies. Therefore, 
I would rather recommend you to use the induction if expansion by using the XI column. Okay, let's move on. So next stop, we will. I will introduce several ways that we can leverage the uh, in interaction extension. Here, we are interacting a categorical variable with a continuous variable. If you directly use times, then it will gives you both mean effect and the interaction effect. If you're using line, it will give you the in mean effect of the continuous variable, interaction effect of the continuous variable and the indicator variable, but not the mean effect of the indicator variable. Last but not least, if you have two categorical variable and you want to interact them into, into regression, you can use i indicator variable 1 times i dot indicator variable 2. So, in this case, we'll have uh, four set of dummies. To just uh, wind work off the main topic a little bit, I want to illustrate how we should think about the coefficient. So here, the baseline reference group is male and white. That means the coefficient for female is actually comparison between white male and white female. The coefficient for black is black male with, with, uh, versus white male. If you want to compare black male with white female, you need to uh, consider multiple coefficients. And uh, I left the viewer to figure out which one you should choose, especially in the case of interaction effect. Alright, so, so far we have basically explored the basic functionality of the logic function and the basic function of the interaction expansion. Because of the specific specification that logic model explore, we cannot really uh, interpret the coefficient as the margin effect as we would do under the ORS regression. The marginal effect is actually depends on which value other variable will choose. In state 11, uh, they made a great improvement by allowing us to calculate the margin directly. So here I'm regressing drink on sex, race, and age. And I want to see actually the marginal effect of sex, conditional everything else. So the conditional everything else has actually ten, turns out to be has lots of meaning. The first way to do the margin effect is to directly use margin sex, which will give you the marginal effect of that two variables. Stata does not specifically say how it calculates, but I guess it calculates the marginal effects for every observation and average those marginal effects. That is using the margin sex directly. The second way is to use margin sex at means. I guess this command actually calculates the mean for every observation, or the mean for every variable, and conditional sec and condition every other variable on their means. So here we can see what is the mean. And this here we can see this is the marginal uh, impact effect of sex. Notice that the two va the two value is quite similar, but not exactly the same.
the last uh, possible specification I will talk about in this video is you can condition on specific values by using at and the parentheses and uh, specify variable and argument within. So here we are conditional on age 20 and race 1. Well, that means we want to see the marginal impact of sex for white, young males and females. Now you can see here the coefficient is very different from the mean. That So that illustrates my initial point that the marginal eff effect of the variable is actually conditional on the value that the other variable takes. Alright, last part of the video I will briefly talk about multivariate uh, Multinomial logic logic model. So here we have actually another variable called drunk. Drunk asks the respond whether or not you ever get drunk. So I'm going to ge generate a new variable that takes three value as we did in the video of generate replace. Drink drunk it takes value one if you never drink. It takes value two if you drink but never drunk. It takes value three if you drink and get drunk. Now let's tab its variable to see its distribution. So roughly you can see that the mass is clustered at drink. This will come handy when we are trying to understand why the multivariate logic actually is conditioning on the drink uh, as the reference group. So before I talk about multivariate logic, I want you guys to see this function. It's a little bit scary, but what it is or what this two function is saying is that you have to have a reference group a, a baseline that does not has any value at the nominator and the rest of the variable that has some value, some sophistication as the nominator. In that case, you, what you actually identify is the relative odds ratio of the j's choice comparing to the null choice, which is the baseline scenario. So this is the intrinsic limitation to the um, log, uh, multinomial logic model. With that in mind, let's run the um, logic model. So here we can say that the drink is chosen as the base outcome. That is because it has the largest mass. And we can see the coefficient here is quite different. But however, this table may not be the table that we want because we we may want to uh, analyze the different pattern of people who actually drinks and drink uh, excessively. That means we want maybe want to model never as our baseline. It's actually very simple to do that, just choose a baseline to 1, because we know that we generate drink drunk as 1. Okay, so here we're using never as a uh, outcome value as a baseline and we compare the choice between drink and never and drunk and never. So you can say you can see that female are more restrained from drinking excessively and uh, it appears also that surprisingly blacks and other uh, races are actually more restrained than whites in drinking successfully. And as you grow older, you are much l less likely to get drunk. All of them are quite sensible. So it appears that the multivariate logic model, a multinomial logic model works well here. That's all for today. Thank you.